hello and welcome to my channel my name is ijoma fab so today i'll be taking you on how i made this beautiful tiered skirt or you can call it a layer skirt out of a fabric crap that i had so you could do this on the side to make some little income so if there's something you like to watch let's get started so i'm going to make use of this fabric bias tape and a one inch elastic band so the waist circumference i'm working with is 24 inches and the skirt length is 16 inches so because this skirt is coming together with the elastic casing i know i need two inches for the elastic casing so i'll be adding two inches to the actual skirt length which is 16 inches plus two inches so that will give me 18 inches so 18 inches is the skirt length i need to work with so because this is a two layer skirt the first length of the skirt is going to be 18 inches so this 18 inches is the 16 inches plus 2 inches for elastic casing. Now we're going to determine the second layer, how high or how short you want it to be. So the second layer for me is going to be 9 inches. So plus the 2 inches elastic casing, that will be 11 inches. So the first length of the skirt is going to be 18 inches. And the second layer of the skirt is going to be 11 inches. So I have this rectangular fabric here which I cut out. So it is folded into 4. So the width when you open it up is 64 inches plus my sewing allowance inclusive. So I cut out two and a half of the waist circumference. So the waist circumference is 24 inches. So times two and a half of it is giving me 64 inches. So I'll be cutting out the layers. So the first layer like we established is 18 inches, which is what I'm going to cut out. And I'll cut out the second layer, which is 11 inches. So after cutting this is how it looks like so the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to open both of them and give it a notch at the midpoint so this notch is going to enable me to align them where when i'm sewing so after giving this notch the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to open it up so this way so this is my notch so this is going to serve as a guide i'm going to bring this this way also so i'm going to place them notch to notch so after placing them notch to notch, I'm going to go ahead to use my chain to secure it together. So after securing it like this together, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and run a stitch from the beginning all the way to the end. So this is to secure both pieces together. So this is what I have after joining the layers together as a piece. So I have the top layer and this is the lower one. The next thing I'm going to do now is to introduce the bias tape to finish up the hem. So for the bias tape, you could choose to do it in two ways. You could choose to make it this way by placing the fabric in between the bias, fold it this way into two and sew it straight down. Then the second way you can do it is sewing the bias from the wrong side of the fabric and turn it to the right side of the fabric. So when you turn it this way, this is how the bias is going to be. It's going to be bold and pronounced. So I'm going to go with this method. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew it from the right, from the wrong side of the fabric straight down. And after sewing, I will then turn it to the right side of the fabric and sew it down to secure it. And I'll repeat the same thing to this other layer. So after turning with the bias, this is how it looks like. So this is the first step. And this is the wrong side of it. This is how it looks like on the inside. And this is the second step. And this is how it looks like on the wrong side. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do now is to close both sides together. But before I do that, I want to mark out the allowance for the casing, for the elastic casing first. So I'm done marking out the two inches for my elastic casing. So I did this to make it easier for me when I want to fix or I want to fold the two inches for the elastic casing. So I'm going to go ahead now and use my iron to press this down and I'll show you how it looks like. So after folding the elastic casing, this is what I have. So this is the two inches for my elastic casing and this is the wrong side of the fabric. So this is how the right side of the fabric looks like. So the next thing to go ahead and do now is to close up on both sides. So before I close up on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and run a stitch here just to secure this layer on this one. And the next thing I'll do also is to repeat the same process. So this just to secure it as one also, so that it will be easy to join them together. Then the next thing to do now is to open up this elastic casing which I folded, close it on the side like this, and sew up with my sewing allowance. So after sewing up with the sewing allowance, on the wrong side here, I would need to 
fold in half inch for the elastic casing to finish up this elastic casing neatly i'll need to fold in half inch all through so another method you can use to close up after securing these layers after sewing them down is to turn it to the wrong side now instead of closing up the two sides first you go ahead and leave about five inches here or six inches five to six inches on this side and on this side you leave about five to six inches so once you've left this allowances you're now going to fold in half inch this way so this way is going to be easier and faster to fold in so you fold in straight until you get to the allowance you left here like five or six inches also but by the time you're done sewing you can now put this together by the side open up the elastic casing that was folded and run a stitch to close up the side so by the time you close up the side you have about five inches to close up here and five inches to close up here so that's another method you can use if you don't want to close the side first before you fold if you think you're going to find it difficult you can use the second method so guys i made use of the second method and i want to show you how it looks like so as a beginner you might find it hard to make use of the first method which i talked about the first method i mentioned that you sew or you close up the side with your sewing allowance then after closing up your side you go ahead and finish up the elastic casing so for some people that are just starting up they might find it hard to use that method so i use the second method and i want to show you how it looks like so this is how it looks like so this is on fold this is my elastic casing i left about seven inches here so to make it easier for you leave between six to eight inches on both sides so when you leave that you now start from that six inches or eight inches and you fold in the elastic casing all through till you get to this other end to where you left about six to eight inches on the other side so by the time you do this you find out that this is easier and faster to close up the elastic casing so after doing this now the next thing to go ahead and do now is to close up the side so this elastic casing here you're going to open it like this now open this other side and place them together like this and close up with the sewing allowance so by the time you close up it will automatically fold again it will go back inwards this way so now it will be easier for you to close up this allowance remaining so you close up here and you close up the other side but remember while closing up both sides you need to leave at least one inch for where the elastic band is going to pass so i'm going to go finish up this and i'll show you how it looks like so after closing up this is what i have so the elastic casing is neatly closed and i left about one inch spacing so that i can pass the elastic band so this is where i have my one inch spacing so you can see all around i've also gone ahead to give it a good press so for the joining this is where the joining is so this could serve as the back or it could serve as the side so it depends on where you want it to be the next thing i'm going to go ahead to do now is to introduce the elastic band so this is the final step of the skirt so for the elastic band this is for a five year old and her waist circumference is 24 inches so i'm going to subtract four inches from the 24 inches so please put the elastic band on the child's waist to be sure that the elastic band is not too tight or too loose on the baby's waist so i'm working with 20 and a half inches here so subtracting four inches is supposed to give me 20 inches but i added a half inch so that by the time i'm done closing up with about quarter of an inch on both sides i'll be left with 20 inches so the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to use my um, safety pin place it this way and i'm going to pass this now into the one inch hole which i made for the elastic band so i'm going to take my pin and put it into this hole so i'll keep doing this now i'll keep passing it into the casing so while doing this you need to be careful or mindful of this part so that it doesn't slack back inward so the next thing i'll do so that this doesn't slack inward is to place it this way so i'm going to use a pin to hold it down so then I can continue passing this. So I have this now at the end here. So what I'm going to do now is to take the two ends of the elastic band. I'm going to go sew it up with quarter of an inch to secure it. So after sewing it, um, I'm going to remove the pin then I'll close up the one inch spacing which I left to pass it and I'll show you how it looks like hey guys this is the final look of the skirt and this is the waist of the skirt this is the first layer the second layer so once you're done sewing go ahead and weave the inner parts of the skirt so guys one tip here our advice if you want to make this use a lighter color and color fabric that way it will bring out the beauty of the skirt 
So we've come to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.